in the 80s, it was a Life magazine article on Red Hook, and it was called The Most Dangerous Place in America, and it was at one point. It destroyed this community. I definitely grew up in the 80s, which is what they considered kind of like the crack era in Red Hook. And I remember like my mom, like, no, we're not going outside. I'm not going to let you do that. On December 17th, 1992, uh, that was the day that Patrick Daly, our local school principal, was murdered. He got caught in a crossfire between two drug gangs and, and was killed. It put Red Hook on the map as a drug-ridden urban war zone and brought a number of agencies together who said, uh, we need changes here. From the very beginning, there was community input um, in the Justice Center. And the way that we selected the Justice Center is we uh, filled a bus with community leaders and community residents and went to seven different possible locations. And this ultimately was the site that they chose. It's a former parochial school. It had been uh, abandoned effectively for 20 years. The court was created that really, really cares. Cares for the community, cares for the clients, and actually makes a difference in so many of our clients' lives. PM call. Mr. Wallen, this is really a good update. And you've been, you've been working steadily for two months, and that kind of shows you that, that you can get clean, and you can work at a job, and you can work there for, you know, for months at a time, show up regularly. I mean, that's, that's, that's great. It's great stuff for you. It's great to see. The first decision I have to make is um, protecting the community, community safety. But uh, once I'm satisfied about that issue, then we can really look at the person and say, what does this person need to get his or her life back on track? Sometimes Arison's recommendation will involve um, community service and writing a letter of apology to the victim and then a class. We also do long-term mandates, which more often than not involves intensive drug treatment. I ended up at Red Hook Community Justice Center because um, I was on drugs and the judge offered to send me to rehab. I never thought I was going to change my life. And now I've been clean for a little over 18 months. What Pauline knew from the beginning is that we wanted her to be successful. So while there are times that she had missteps, she always knew as a bottom line, we were here to support her. You know, they treated me like a person. Even the staff downstairs in the holding cell, they were nice. You know, I've been doing jail all my life, you know, so at this point, it was easy to go to jail. That was an easy thing, but coming here, it wasn't easy. It was hard, you know. I was sentenced to do residential treatment and um, trauma focused therapy, and it helped me, you know, take a look at some of the circumstances that happened in my life and using drugs to cover up the pain and the, and, the, and the bad feelings. I have changed a lot, you know, immensely. I will be graduating with an associate's degree in chemical dependency, and I uh, plan on going to Hunter College and get my bachelor's in social work. Our courtroom is set up so that the judge is not looking down on defendants or complainants or respondents. They are at eye level they are able to approach the judge. They're able to approach anyone in here with a question or a problem, and they get treated the way we want to be treated. Look, you put in all the work at the detox and the rehab, you're doing what you need uh, to do at that point, and it's just a question of using the outpatient, both drug and mental health, to get back on track. They're definitely interested in the community. Uh, this judge from the top down are, are excellent. You know what I mean? Their, their mannerisms, their behavior, their caring is totally different than anything I ever came in contact with in my entire life. Each individual defendant, victim, community member needs to be treated with dignity and respect and needs to be communicated with in plain language about what's going on in court. Um, and that's something that the Justice Center has hardwired into its DNA and that you a message that you receive from the Justice Center as soon as you come in the door. I'm just reminding you, there was uh, the first time you were, we saw you after uh, you had been in, in treatment for a significant period of time, no one in the courtroom recognized you. That's how far you've come. I know. That's Your progress is amazing. We give you the opportunity, you do the work. Thank you've you done so a lot much. of great work. Congratulations. So me and my mom was in the backyard picking up the furniture, putting it away, and I just looked up and I was like, is that a cloud? And I'm standing there, she was like, Kenya, that's a wave. And it just dropped. The water just kept coming and coming and coming. It actually went to the second, to the, before the top step there. 
Sandy was a tough time and the court staff took the time to make sure that we were part of the recovery efforts. I met Kenya after Hurricane Sandy. Not only was she suffering mentally, she was suffering physically, and she was in crisis, so how can I help you? I know that there's, I can't solve the world in one day, but what can I do to help you? The Justice Center, they were actually the first ones to come out, and they were knocking on people's doors, and because I have elderly neighbors, they had medications for them and everything. It was like so comforting, because for a minute, I was like hopeless. Well, this building behind me, uh, I moved here when I was 11 years old. When I first went to the Red Hook Community Justice Center, I was nervous and I was scared because I was there for a bad reason. There was a fight at school and I got involved in it. So when I went there, I went to youth court. So there's two types of teenagers that the youth court deals with. The teenagers who actually got into trouble for low-level offenses, such as like truancy, possession of marijuana, or a weapon, or the kids who actually sign up to be a part of the program to be the, the young people who hear these cases. How are you? It's good to see you. How's everything? How's it been going? Good, yeah? Nice. Okay. The Justice Center was a tremendous hope. I went from being a respondent all the way to being a GED graduate there. I'm actually going to start college in the fall. Johnny Batista, he's an amazing young man. He came back not too long ago to sign up for the GED program that we have on site. And that for me was a proud moment because I kind of seen him grow from like a boy into a young man. We understand that anybody walking in our front door or coming in the back door from the police are part of our community. They're part of our community before they had a case, while the case is pending, and when the case is over. With. I'm here actually for, um, for community service. I made a mistake, I did something wrong, so I have to pay for my mistake. And I think it's good, because at the same time, we're out here restoring the community, make it look better. We've seen examples, unfortunately, around the country of protests of folks who have lost confidence in their criminal justice system. Red Hook is doing the exact opposite. It's building a trust between law enforcement and the community and a vital partnership that we need. We are at the Red Hook Justice Center. And I have to tell you, for years, I've gotten to know the work of this extraordinary institution. It epitomizes what I believe in, in terms of uh, progressive approach uh, to public safety, to bringing community and public safety professionals together to keep us all safe. The Red Hook Community Justice Center has made a number of important contributions to the New York State court system and really beyond as well. And I think its primary contribution has been to serve as a laboratory for new ideas, as a place where you can go to test important questions about justice. Can a court reach out to a community and engage it in the process of doing justice? Can a court treat individual defendants with dignity and respect? Is it possible to come up with new and more meaningful alternatives to incarceration? People have heard about the Red Hook Community Justice Center. They've heard about some interesting thing that's happening there, and they've been inspired to not necessarily replicate that in a cookie cutter model, but to take that idea and run with that. Uh, what we're looking to do is take many of those, what people consider low level but, uh, crimes, but crimes that have a deep and difficult impact on the community, and really seeing that often this person, if you look at them in a holistic sense, there's things that you can do and intervene with them uh, to create a much better outcome, a sort of a restorative justice, and, and emphasis on the restorative. I mean, not only are they restoring the community, but you're helping to restore uh, the strength of a person to make better choices. place I used to see it before Justice Center. 
the difference between since 2000 and now, that's huge difference. The Justice Center, since they came over here, safer for the public, better for everybody, for the businesses and everything. It's good to see that the neighborhoods changed. It's nice. Parks Department as well, putting trees everywhere. It, it's good, and we have a good feeling. After changes that I see and hearing about the Justice Center, I came back and really, you know, I got police. But before that, no. Before 2000, if you can, if you could give it to me for free, I will not take it. Born and raised in Red Hook, for me, I'm proud. You know, I come from a neighborhood that had a lot of stigma back in the day. And now, you know, with the Justice Center here and making it so different, along with other community-based organizations, it has definitely changed for the better. Uh, the changes in, in Red Hook itself have been uh, drastic and significant. I think that the community courts are now gonna be seen as the way to address some of the significant and substantial issues there are across this country, with results that are better for the community, better for the police, better for the court system, better for offenders, and most of all, better for victims. We're just rebuilding this community. We're going through a renaissance period here now. If I had to come to Red Hook, I would be in prison. No doubt about it. Or dead. I went to school for human services assistance and I'm currently doing an internship. I'm on the other side of the desk now. I'm not the client, I'm the person helping someone and it feels really good. I'm so grateful that like for whatever reason I would come here to the Red Hook Community Justice Center. It saved my life. Thank you.